What's up guys, I just wanted to make a quick correction to this video before we get started. I'm actually going to be watching the motherboard, RAM, and CPU all at the same time because it was just easier that way. I thought it would be a pain to do them all at once, but it turns out it's just easier to put the CPU in the socket and the RAM like, up against the motherboard and wash them all in the same cycle. So instead of just washing the motherboard, which I initially intended on doing, and as you'll see in the next couple clips, um, I actually do say that we're only going to wash the motherboard. Just ignore that, we're going to wash the motherboard, RAM, and CPU all at once. Let's go ahead and get started. Hello and welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology. So in the last video, we took a video card and put it through the dishwasher. It came out just fine. So next, I'm going to try a couple other PC components. First, I think during this video, I'm going to try the motherboard. Then I'm going to try the CPU. Then I'm going to take this whole thing and throw it in the dishwasher and see if it comes out all right. Um, that's going to be split into three separate videos because once again, if we did it, and one video will just take forever and it would be a pain to work with. The footage would just be crazy. Premiere would, you know, crash multiple times because I don't have enough RAM on my PC to edit that much. Um, so I'm going to split it into three videos. I'll probably upload them all this weekend because I have a fall break. Um, so I finally have some time to make some videos, thank goodness. And I'm finally halfway through the semester. Oh, the semester of college is almost over, thank goodness. I... I, I cannot wait for this to end. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to pull the motherboard out of this PC. We're going to take a look at everything, make sure everything works to begin with. Um, in the last video, I did demo the system uh, going online and functioning, but I'll do it again. I'll bring out the monitor, put it over here, set everything up, and we will check out if the system works first, and then I'll put the motherboard through the dishwasher. Oh yeah, and don't forget to like this video because it seems like we're still having some issues with bots, and that's all I'm going to say about that. I really like how this PC case has a clear window on here because I can just go over it and check out what's inside uh, to see if I need to add anything like a video card or a CPU or a heatsink or something like that. And it looks like we have a video card, the CPU is installed, I think there's a Pentium 4 in here running at like 2.5 gigahertz maybe, and there is no hard drive. Last time I don't believe there was a hard drive in the system either, so uh, we're not going to be booting into an operating system just into the power on self-test. So this thing is ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and put it over here, hook up a monitor and boot it up. Everything is hooked up now and hopefully it still works because it's only been a week and a half since the last test so the system should still be fine. Um, here we go. And I'm just looking for a video output with the power on self test displayed and there we go. So the board is functional along with everything else in the system. I'm going to go ahead and take the motherboard out and we can throw it in the dishwasher. And this is the fun part because this system is an absolute mess so I have to pull all this crap out of the case and uh, get the motherboard just by itself. So this is going to be a lot of fun and probably going to take quite a while. And by the way guys, I do know that I pronounce motherboard kind of wrong because I always get comments about that and trust me, I know how it's spelled, I know I pronounce it wrong, it's just way too much work for me to pronounce it properly on camera because I have to go through this whole thing, I'm like muv Burr, muffler, and it just it just takes so long. So it's easier for uh, for me personally just to pronounce it with a V syllable. Um, please no complaints about that. I know I said this like ten times uh, throughout the video already, and some of you are probably already getting annoyed by it. Um, I don't know why. It just seems to be an issue with some people. So I'm sorry that I cannot pronounce it, but uh, I'm not gonna even try because it's just too frustrating for me. As you can see, the motherboard has been removed. That was a big pain in the rear end, but there are two things we need to do before we can throw this into the dishwasher. First off, you need to take the CMOS battery out, which I've already done. I'm just going to toss that to the side. And secondly, you need to make sure everything is properly discharged. It's going to be a couple hours before I throw this into the dishwasher, so I'm not really too worried about that. So let's go ahead and, uh, well, it's going to be a couple hours for me, but uh, instantaneous for you guys because video editing. Um, and I'm just going to throw this into the dishwasher, of course, just like last time. I'm going to use the waterproof camera to capture uh, the board inside the dishwasher for just a couple seconds, probably 30, because I don't want to destroy the camera, but I also want to uh, show you guys I'm not messing around with you. And unfortunately, this board isn't as dirty as that video card was, so we're not going to see too much of a change, but the back does have quite a bit of dust on it. You can see it all right here pulled up um, around certain areas, so hopefully that will wash out nice. and. Uh, I'm just crossing my fingers that this thing comes out all right. So throw it in the dishwasher, dry it off, and then we'll test it out to see if it is still functional.
two, I think. Alright guys, so I apologize for being so quiet around the part where we were actually throwing everything in the dishwasher. Other people were around, I thought it'd be kind of weird if I just started talking to the camera. Um, so I thought it'd be best just to keep quiet during that scene. So as you can see, the motherboard is right here. I have the fan pointed on it, so it's going to be drying for a couple hours. You can see the water all over it. Um, and then on the back, it's actually all nice and clean now, so that worked out pretty well. The RAM is right here. I was kind of worried that these stickers um, right here we're going to wash off, but that didn't happen, thank goodness. I mean, it wouldn't have really mattered. It would just be kind of confusing for me when I was going... If I went through storage and found these, I wouldn't know what type of RAM it was. Um, besides, you know, the fact that the pin layout looks like DDR RAM. And then you can see the processor here, which, yes, I did put this in the dishwasher as well. Uh, and I did have a couple issues with it. I had to take it out a couple times because, one, it wouldn't go into the socket. And then I figured out it wouldn't go into the socket because I bent one of the pins with my finger. So I had to take a razor blade and uh, fix that. And then, two, it fell out of the socket and bent more pins. So I had to go back and fix that. So that was kind of a pain, but hopefully the processor still works. As you can see, the water is trapped in between the pins right there. And hopefully that dries out pretty well. So I'm going to leave all this here for just a couple hours, let it dry out, and I'm going to throw it back in that system. Oh, God. I don't know if I want to throw it back in that system. I might just leave it out here and hook up the power supply to everything, because throwing it back in that system is going to take forever. Um, but either way, we're going to see if the motherboard, RAM, and CPU still function using the monitor and the system over there or parts of the system over there like we did before uh, but this time after it's been dishwashed. At this point it's been approximately five hours and I think everything is dry and ready to go. So I'm panning around the motherboard here. I don't see any visible water. Hopefully everything is good. The CPU looks fine as well. Um, I was kind of disappointed about the CPU because the uh, wash cycle didn't remove all of the old thermal paste on here. As you can see, there's quite a bit of thermal paste or thermal paste residue still stuck to the top of the CPU. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed about that. And then the RAM looks fine too. So I'm going to throw all of this back together and try to boot the system. Okay, so I did like this power supply until now because I could turn it on and it would provide power to the board no matter what, even if I didn't have the proper header, uh, proper headers hooked up. Oh, I can't speak right now. Again, this is that time of the video where I was just frustrated and uh, my speech is starting to slur and I'm like, oh, I feel like throwing this board through the window. But I'm going to try to demonstrate this. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Heck, it might even turn on this time. But I'm going to power it on. And you can see the fan will just sit here and twitch. And it did it a lot worse last time. I actually came on and started spinning and then it stopped and started twitching and a whole bunch of uh, other weird stuff. So I'm not sure if the board killed the power supply or if the power supply killed the board or they're just not working. Uh, I, I'm really not sure what's going on right now. So I'm going to pull out my Sparkle power supply that I had in my old Pentium 4 machine that I use for a lot of Linux videos. Um, I'm going to hook this up and see if it will get the board to power on and hopefully it does or else this video is going to suck. Ah oh, man guys, it's not looking good. So at this point, I think the board is a lost cause. I am pretty sure it's dead because as you can see, I have manually powered the system on and I'm not getting any video output. The CPU fan is spinning, um, but once again, no video output. That means the system is not running through the power on self-test. I know for a fact that this video card is good because we tested it earlier. Um, so I'm not really sure what to do right now. There is power being supplied to the video card though because I can feel the heat sink heating up. The north bridge is getting hot. So is the CPU. Um, so power is being supplied to everything. We're just not getting anything out of it, unfortunately. Um, so I'm going to mess around with this a little bit more, see if there's anything I can do. I'm going to test out the RAM and the CPU to see if either one of those still works. Um, and then I don't know if we're going to have a video on or not, because if the RAM doesn't work and the CPU doesn't work and the motherboard doesn't work, there's really no point of even publishing this video. Uh, and as you can tell, I'm just really tired right now because uh, I had to go and come back and go and come back. And it's been probably about 
uh, 12 hours since I've started this video. So, <sighs> really frustrated now. I'm going to go test out all the other components and get back to you guys. Huh, well, I just tested both sticks of RAM, and it appears both of them are actually functional. And earlier, I believe I said you can tell by the pins that this is PC133 S, uh, SD RAM. And I looked at it some more, and I pulled out a PC or a motherboard that uses PC133 SD RAM, and then I realized, oh, this is DDR. Uh, so that was a mistake earlier in the video, and I'll probably throw in an annotation just to correct that. But this is DDR RAM running at, I think, 333 megahertz. Um, so both these sticks are functional, so that's good. It didn't kill everything in the system. Next, I'm going to take the CPU out and see if I can get the other CPU to boot on the system. And you can see the display right there, reboot or select po proper boot device. Um, and it did go through the power on self-test and pass. So the RAM is working, yay. All right, so check this out. The CPU is actually functional. I took the old uh, Pentium 4 out that was in this motherboard. It's right here. I had to uh, mess around with that a little bit because it was stuck to the heatsink. So I had to use the blow dryer and all that to get the thermal place to loose so I could take out the processor and put in this new one. But that other Pentium 4 that was in that board is now inside this board and I didn't film it because I didn't expect it to work I was just testing it just in case uh, but both the processor and the RAM work which is weird so the board didn't kill any either of those and uh, the only thing that really suffered during the dishwashing cycle was the board itself so not really sure what happened with that um, either the power supply right here killed it or I mean I can't really think of another reason to be honest because this did have sufficient time to dry, trust me. Because I had it on this fan, this fan was on it for five hours on my desk, uh, so it was blowing out all the water, I swapped it around, turned it around every hour, um, so it would get to a different side. And then right before I put everything together, I took a blow dryer, the same blow dryer that was actually under my chair right here that I used to get the CPU loose. Yeah, isn't that attractive? Ooh, leopard print. And I used that blow dryer to dry everything out. Uh, so I took it, uh, didn't hold it too close because once again that might cause damage to the board. Actually I didn't even say that so I don't know why I said once again. But that might cause damage to the board if you hold it too close. I held it up here, gave everything a nice little couple times over, probably did this for about five minutes and I plugged the board in uh, and it was just dead. So that was my procedure if anyone has any issues with that. Uh, not really sure what happened there. So I'm definitely going to have to do this again because this should have worked just fine. And this will be my next victim. So, I mean, I'm not really sure. To be honest, I think uh, for certain the power supply probably killed this board. Alright, so at least we can conclude that the RAM and the CPU were both dishwasher safe. But unfortunately, it appears the board was not. I'm not really sure what happened here. This should have been dishwasher safe. I'm pretty sure the power supply killed the board, so I'm definitely going to have another trial of this because this should have came out of the wash just fine. Um, and I'm kind of disappointed because this was a pretty nice board. As you can see, it's equipped with all solid state capacitors, lots of PCI slots, um, and that's really a, uh, really a bad loss. I'm not really too happy about this. So uh, I think that's going to be about it for this video. I have a whole bunch of stuff to clean up because it took so long and required so many resources to make sure all this worked. Um, I had to go in the closet and pull everything out. Oh my goodness, this is going to be so much fun to clean up. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'm sorry if this video is going to end up being super long. I'm going to go in Premiere, edit this video to death, because it's going to require a lot of editing, and then publish it. And uh, I think, for the most part, it's going to be pretty neat. Uh, but still, not too happy about this. We're going to have another run at this. I'll see you guys next time.